more walking. Got some light training planned for today. Just gonna do some body weight stuff. Walking downtown with my fam fam. One foot in front of the other. Staying away from people. Or at least trying to. Got the zombie apocalypse truck out for today. I figure it's appropriate with the COVID-19 going on. Heading to the gym, the strongest gym in the West. And I had a great walk, great talk with my son, Jake, and uh, went also for a walk with my daughter, Quinn, and also with my wifey poo, Andy Bell, and our dog, Daisy Bell. With a nice walk, and then the wifey took the kids to uh, In-N-Out Burger, I think. And uh, I think they all ordered up some Flying Dutchman. And um, I'm heading over here to Super Training to kick some ass. We got some uh, exercises that I'm going to uh, show you guys um, via my website, markbell.com. Remember, we're making everything free over there for a whole month. So that way you guys got some easy access to some great content. And um, you get to see, you know, some of the creativity that we have when it comes to home gym exercises along with just flat out body weight exercise and body weight movement so i think you guys will really enjoy that in addition to that considering a couple other things we'll see what we can put into place but going to talk to my team i have no intentions of of releasing anybody uh i have intentions of slingshot continuing to do well i have intentions of, sling, of seeing slingshot do even better than it's ever done before and to see us thrive and grow and expand through these times and we're going to do so with creativity rather than mope, rather than bitch, rather than complain, uh, rather than think about all the problems that uh, may occur or that we may have or that we had, we're gonna think about solutions. And I think that Super Training and Slingshot, we have been providing solutions for you guys for a long time on figuring out how we're gonna help you, how we're gonna assist in making the world a better place to lift. And that is still the goal. The goal has not changed. We're also going to consist. We're also going to hit you with this idea and concept that I came up with, which is called lift through it. I want to teach you how to lift through all of it, no matter what's going on out there. We are always going to need some forms of exercise, and we'll always need some sense of accomplishment. And when you accomplish exercise, it makes you feel good. It empowers you. Um, it's been utilized for thousands of years by human beings to help keep the body, mind, and spirit strong. And we're going to keep on doing that here at Slingshot. So I'm going to tell my troops right now, they go in there right now, and I'm going to tell them this is about creativity. And the more creative that we can be, the more that we can thrive. We actually have a wonderful opportunity here in the face of this, uh, crisis that we're all going through, um, in the face of some, what appears to be some really, really tough times. We've lost a lot of human beings. You know, we really, really have. We lost a lot of human beings. I mean, we lost at least, you know, five, six times the amount that was lost in like 9-11. We can all think about, we can all think back to what a horrific thing that was, right? Um, so it, it's, it's not great, but complaining about it, crying about it, worrying about it um, is not going to solve problems and that's what I'm into that's what I'm going to try to do and you know for me it's easy to say easier said than done you know like I, I haven't been directly impacted and maybe I will be and maybe my faith will be tested and maybe my values will be tested uh, strongly um, you know when that time comes because of course you're going to cry about it of course you can be upset about it and of course you're going to wonder why has it happened to you and your family and stuff like that. And I, I totally understand all that. All I'm saying is that you always want to try to, once that part wears off and once you kind of internalize stuff, it's all about interpretation. How do you interpret it? How do you get through it? How do you get past it? How do you lift through it? How do you live through it? And uh, lift, lifting through stuff has helped me deal with death before and it will help me to continue to deal with the death 
the deaths that are happening now. It'll continue to help me in time in crisis situations, and um, that has been very useful to me. And that's what I want to promote. Uh, that it may be useful to you as well. Maybe not. Maybe you disagree, but that's okay. We're all adults, and you can agree and disagree with whatever you like from me. That's just fine. Um, I'm just trying to provide a good service and trying to provide some uh, fundamentals that I think will provide value to your life. Anyway, we're going to go in the gym and we're going to get some exercise done, and that's it. The key with jumping ropes is you don't have to jump very high. I mean, the rope is only so big, you know? get tired your arms get super tired is <laughs> the hard part when you're out of practice with it Josh uh, set the timer over here what do you set it for five minutes yep so the workout the workout is up to you how long you want to jump rope is gonna be up to you you can do anywhere between five minutes or 20 minutes for us since we both stink at it it's been a while we're gonna do five minutes one of the keys to jumping rope is just keeping a good tight arm position and you don't have to jump very high because the rope's not very big. So I think people think they need to, whoops, <laughs> there we go. People think they need to jump, you know, really high to get over the rope. So they'll, they'll go like this every time. They're trying to, and they get so tired out, right? You only have to jump a tiny bit. Look how thin the rope is. It's only this big, right? For me, the hard part is gonna be to try to keep my elbows down and in which are supposed to be like right here and they're supposed to stay there. Watch the top level crossfitters do their double unders and you'll see what I mean. But anyway, that's what we're going for. We're gonna do five minutes and it starts right now. I'm trying to practice some breathing. Concentrate on your breathing. Just nice light jumps. Just already got my heart rate cranking. So I'm going to rest for about 20 seconds, let the arms recuperate, and go back at it again. It's not like I was dying, but when you're new at something, and you're just getting started on something again, give yourself an opportunity to be good at it. This is Mark Bell from Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. Thank you all so much for joining in on markbell.com. We're trying to make this information free. We're trying to have the barrier of entry into fitness as low as possible. And uh, it's a rough time for everyone. But the mission here at Slingshot and Super Training Headquarters is still the same. We're trying to make the world a better place to lift. And we're also trying to teach you how to lift through it. Here's a great opportunity to lift through it. Here's a great opportunity to practice how attached you are to fitness. And we're gonna show you how you can do that with some of these simple exercises for today. We got some push-ups, we got some pull-ups, and we got some curls. Now, whatever variation of some of this stuff, we're happen to be in Super Training Gym and Slingshot World Headquarters right now. We we'll understand maybe you don't have access to all this stuff that we have access to, but get it done whatever way figure out a way to get it done whatever way you can at home uh, outside whatever piece of equipment that you have we hope that you have some stuff because that, that'll make things a little bit easier but we got uh, we'll start out with some push-ups and have Josh demonstrate how to do a push-up all right so for these push-ups uh, the important thing is is that you do your best to work through a full range of motion and just get up whatever way you can depending on your fitness level or um, where your mobility is at, but ideally you want your hands to be just underneath your shoulders or maybe outside just a little bit. You can play around with different push-up variations, but for right now we'll just stick with the standard push-up. You'll get your hands set, and then once you take your legs off the floor, you're going to drive your toes into the floor behind you, and you're going to pull your belly button to your spine. You don't want to have kind of a saggy back. You don't want to have a, uh, a tripod pyramid back either. You want to be in a good plank position and then all you're going to do is you're going to bring your chest down to the floor and then push up. How many reps we got here? Ten? We got an AMRAP for a minute. 
So oh man. Maybe I can get to ten. Jesse in a minute. Furtick's crazy. I know. What's what's up with that, Jesse? If you're having, uh, if you struggle getting up, you can go up on your knees first, and then pick your legs up off the uh, off the floor. You can come down and kind of try to come up real explosively. Go down. But you're going to set a timer for a minute. And you're going to do as many good, clean reps as possible. In that minute, if your form starts to break down, if you start to get a little a little shaky and start to do one of these, it's okay to set your knees down, take a big breath, and come back to it when you can do more clean, perfect reps. How many rounds of this are we supposed to do? We gotta do five. So yeah. because we have to do five rounds of it, I'm glad he mentioned that, because we have to do five rounds of this uh, torture, you may have to set your AM rep at about 30 seconds, depending on your level of push-ups. But we're gonna show you in the second round how you can scale your push-ups uh, utilizing a slingshot and we'll also show you how to scale your pull-ups. How many pull-ups do we have to do? Same thing. It's, a, it's an Ooh. AMRAP of a minute. Man, yeah. AMRAP of a minute. I think I can do one. <laughs> but what you could do is like uh, you guys seen me do pull-ups for a while now. I'm not great at pull-ups especially at my current body weight. I'm around 235, 240 pounds. Uh, I'm a little bit better as soon as I get into like the 230 pound range because I can show you guys. So like it depends on like, you know, where you have your hands, you know, whether your hands are this way or whether your hands are that way. For me, having my hands this way is a little easier. And I'm going to show you right now how I would scale it and how I would do it if I was to try to do it for a minute. Ryan, if you could step over there, that would be perfect because I'm going to go this way. And so what I would do is you're going to notice me, uh, just watch for the dumbbells there. Uh, notice I'm going to um, jump off the ground just a little bit, okay? So I'm going to scale it by jumping off the ground a little bit. And, uh, you know, how do you, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this before, but how do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? If you tried to think about how you're going to do that, you'd be overwhelmed. You're like, oh my God, how am I going to eat however the hell much an elephant weighs if you try to think about it? So we're not really worried about the minute. That's not a concern for us. We're not going to bite off more than we can chew. We're just going to take what we can get and we're going to do the best we can with it. So I'm going to go like this. I'm gonna do a little bit of a kick from the ground and pull up. There's one, and because I know I have to do this for a while, taking my time, there's two, maybe about two, three seconds per rep. There's three, four, five. I'm not fatigued, I'm not that tired yet, but I don't wanna get into a compromised position. I'm gonna rest another 10. Technically, I'd have the clock on the ground right here and I'd be checking it out. And I'd go at it again. You get the idea, right? So what seemed like an insurmountable thing, it seemed like you had no shot, and you were like, oh my God, <laughs> if I tried to go for a minute the whole time, you might have done 10 reps frantically and you might have passed out, right? Well, I, I think I could probably keep that pace for maybe 15, 20 reps for five rounds. It's still gonna be really, really difficult. So I would have that in the back of my head too, because even though we're trying to be a bunch of savages and we're trying to train really hard, you're only as good as your recovery. You have to be able to recover from these workouts. So again, that first one is a minute, the second one is a minute, but maybe your fitness level only allows you to do 30 seconds at this current time, that's okay. And then maybe because of that, because it's a shorter time period that your AMRAP is, maybe you can go a little faster and not have to rest as I was doing there. Next exercise. Next exercise should be everybody's favorite. It's some curls. Oh, yay! You can do Verdict. these. You can do these with Thanks, a band, Jesse. with dumbbells, a bar. Uh, I've seen people like get textbooks and hold them like this and do curls with textbooks. Uh, those will smoke your grip pretty quick, Damn. surprisingly. Uh, textbook curls. Uh, right? Yeah, textbook. Like Mark was saying, depending on your fitness level, maybe just start out with five sets of ten. It's okay if you get a little bit of body English in there. You can do normal curls, you can do hammer curls, you can do Twist alternating curls. Yeah. Alternating curls isn't a bad idea because it gives you a nice amount of rest in between the other hellish exercises we were just doing. Because if you're doing you know, two at the same time, you're doing both arms, you're gonna finish a lot quicker and then you have to get to the next movement right away. So a veteran like myself, take my time doing these. This is the easier part of the workout. 
a website called EliteFTS.com. I think Rogue Fitness has shut down for a little bit, so I don't think they're up and running at the moment. But as soon as they are, they sell all this stuff as well. There's a lot of different ways to hook this up. So if I just am to put it through here, that's going to give me a certain amount of resistance and a certain, I'm sorry, assistance, because it's going to be assisting me up in the pull-up, okay? If I am to tie it off around here like this, because we shortened it up, it's now going to give me more assistance, right? So it just depends on, on what you're looking for and what, you're, what you may need, okay? For me, I don't think I need a lot, so I'll, I would just go here. I'm not really worried about it being a little off-center or being crooked. Um, if I was, I could just attach it to there, but I, I don't, I'm not really too worried about it pulling one way or the other. I could simply just you know, put it on here for this set, and the next set put it over there. I'm not someone that freaks out about it. Although I do need my fives and my tens and my 25s and 35s to at least look the same. Otherwise, I, I might get a little sad. So you just push it down and then try to get your foot in there like yay and like yay make sure it's secure underneath the middle of your foot and make sure you have an understanding that that's where the band is at it's under the middle of your foot and then from here we're just going to pull up and we're going to let it let our body kind of swing underneath there like that and you pull up like this if i need to rest i can kind of wait down here hang out say okay the thing for me is this feels this feels stronger and this feels better than doing it without the band because I can contract my back. If you've ever done any bodybuilding and had someone help you with like a lat pull down or a row, you get to actually squeeze the muscles a lot better. So in this case, even though some people are like, ah, why are you using a band to help you? When you have that help, I can go from up here and I can really squeeze the muscle a lot better and I can feel the lats a lot better. As you're coming out of this, Make sure you don't kill yourself with it. Pull down, wait till your foot's out of there and you're good to go. Josh's gonna demo some slingshot push-ups. So you just slide it on over both arms. The, depending on what's most comfortable for you and how you like to wear it, you can wear it and it can just cover uh, the bottom of your elbow. I prefer to wear it just a little bit higher and have my elbow exposed. But essentially, all the rules of the push-up are gonna be the same. And what's nice about wearing a, uh, a slingshot push-up is that it's going to give you just a little bit of a boost that you may need at the bottom and it's also going to protect your shoulders at the most compromised position which would be at the bottom and then you're also able to get a couple extra reps fry out the triceps a little bit build up that horseshoe and uh, keep on moving on some people are you know some people are probably watching this right now and they're like i can't do push-ups i haven't done a push-up in forever if you get a slingshot push-up you're going to be able to do a push-up it will take a lot of the pain and a lot of the struggle and a lot of the annoyance that you may have had in the past and you can see how it's just right across kind of the chest, the lower chest, and it's giving him that support just to help him and assist him to push through the top there. There you go. So again, it's just three exercises. Uh, the the push-up and the pull-up are done for one minute. The curls are done for 20 reps, yep. right? 20 reps. We're doing this for five rounds. How long are you going to rest in between rounds? We'll make sure to put it on there, but I would just automatically suggest that you always rest about two or three minutes. You know, and it, it, it all depends on your fitness level, but I would imagine when you're trying to do an AMRAP of something that uh, it's going to get difficult really quick. And it's fun to do these things and it's fun to get after it, but if you only rested like a minute or 30 seconds, in between rounds, you would fall flat on your face very quickly. You wouldn't have a, enough reserve to go at it hard again. You would do like 30 reps, and then you'd do like six reps, and then you'd do like no reps, and then you'd probably cry.
driving to McCooney, and I'm in the back seat eating some Flying Dutchman as we get chauffeured around. My kids didn't want me to come with them, but I came with them, and they said that I'm embarrassing. <laughs> but here we go. All right, I got a fancier spoon for you, bitches. <laughs> here we go. Excellent. I'm here uh, celebrating my sister-in-law's birthday. Mm. Cheers. Bye. Got some slingshot protein going on over here, finishing up the night. And just a little prediction. It is like March 25th or something like that. I think as we go into April that all this stuff's going to be cleared up. And I think that uh, some sort of understanding between President Trump and maybe uh, some other powers that be, maybe like a Jeff Bezos or something like that, I think um, will come to help rescue and save the country. And the reason why I think that is we just have a lot of great resources here in the United States. And I think that with, with Amazon, Amazon Prime, and all the stuff that they have going on, I, I just have a hunch that, that the powers that be will come together uh, in this weird time, and they will uh, work together. And that maybe Amazon will help get the medicine out to people or something like that. I'm not quite sure, but uh, I think everyone, you know, just do the best you can day in and day out. Um, don't have any expectations for something to happen or something not to happen. Uh, but I personally feel, I can just feel it. And that doesn't much mean much of anything other than it's just a feeling. But I feel that we're getting out of the woods here sooner rather than later. More people will die. People die every single day. That's part of life. It's part of living. And uh, anything that's alive can one day be dead. Uh, hopefully we already recognize that and realize that and it's sad because it could be you know our own family members and things like that but anyway I'm gonna get the hell out of here another successful day of carnivore 100 had some great workouts today as you guys saw earlier in the footage um, some of that some of that random body weight stuff that was all stuff that's done for markbell.com we set up some body weight workouts in addition to body weight workouts we also did home gym style stuff. Now we did it all in the confines of Super Training Gym, which is a beautiful 8,000 square foot facility that has everything and anything you need, anything and everything you think of towards getting stronger, but you don't necessarily need all that stuff um, in order to get great workouts at your home gym. As you saw, you know, we were just curling with some dumbbells and we were just doing some push-ups and some pull-ups and some different things like that. Anyway, I'm going to watch this weird Tiger King movie that everyone's going crazy about. My dog's going bonkers in the background along with my daughter. We had a great day as a family. We celebrated my sister-in-law's 41st birthday. Happy birthday, April Donald. You make a huge difference over at Slingshot. You are much appreciated, and uh, the efforts that you're making in apparel are uh, not going unnoticed. You're making some huge changes, some huge uh, leaps and bounds for our company and for our business your sister's business and for my business i really appreciate it everybody out there keep lifting through it no matter what if you want to get this hat and you want to support what we got going on you can go over to markbellslingshot.com and check that stuff out right now and you can support april and it's a great way to say happy birthday to her strength is never a weakness weakness is never a strength catch y'all later